Hi, my name is Joey Accardo. I'm here to explain emergency stop systems on our SmartRock D65 Mark II. Some of this information will also apply to SmartRock T35, T40, and T45. The first thing we want to look at anytime we're troubleshooting an emergency stop issue is do we have the stop icon and do we have any other faults indicated on the control system? In this case, the system is indicating that an emergency stop has been tripped and it's going to send some other errors as well. When the emergency stop system is experiencing a fault or an emergency stop is tripped, this light will indicate in blue. If the system can be reset, you simply push the button, you'll hear the relays engage, and then the emergency stop system is now operational and the machine can go back to work. In the event that an emergency stop remains tripped or there's a consistent fault in the wiring, switches, or other hardware, the emergency stop system will not reset. And if that blue button fails to reset, we need to do further troubleshooting. When troubleshooting the emergency stop circuit, the first place I like to start is making sure that all the emergency stops around the outside of the machine have been reset. The number of emergency stops present may vary based on configurations and model year. However, there are typically one emergency stop on the cab side and one on the non-cab side. The other thing to look at when troubleshooting is the connections behind the emergency stop. There's some wiring that can run through those areas that could become damaged by foreign objects on the tracks. So now that we've pushed the emergency stop, we twist to reset and make sure that it pops out in a positive way. Let's go around and look at the emergency stop on the non-cab side. On this side of the machine, we have another emergency stop button identical to the one on the other side, also with wires coming out of the back and up under into the canopy area. This emergency stop is placed with proximity to the fueling and other non-cab side driller activities. The other important component of the emergency stop system is the bump bar on the feed. This is sometimes called the safety edge and replaces the traditional rope switch design. It's pressure sensitive, so when contact is made with it, it immediately stops the engine. Some common faults that we run into are material being built up inside of the rubber profile or behind it, causing pressure to be placed internally on the unit, as well as water getting into it in the winter months and then refreezing. Underneath the right console armrest next to the controls, we have some electrical components, particularly in this case, K70 and K71. K70 and K71 are the main emergency stop relays used for monitoring the safety system, resetting it, and allowing the machine to operate. In the event of a fault, there are some important diagnostic tools that are available to us. There are three LEDs in the face of each emergency stop relay. Using the documentation provided by EpiRock, you can look at those LEDs and make a quick determination of what faults may be present and which part of the circuit it is in. On machines that are equipped with window shades, you may need to remove the window shade from here. It's simply done by releasing these clips. And from there, we remove the armrest. It's a flexible foam rubber. Make sure that it's empty before you remove it. And now we have access to K70 and K71. K71 is going to be primarily responsible for monitoring the emergency stop push buttons while K70 is utilized for the bump bar on the feed rail. Utilizing that information in the schematics, you can figure out most of your problems very quickly. The gray relay on the left, K70, is triggered when the emergency stop bump bar is activated. It's only done briefly because it's not latched on. So when pressure is detected by the bar, you'll see the LEDs go red, as is demonstrated. On the K71 relay, K1 and K2 LEDs indicate that the system is working and intact. In this case, I'm going to press an emergency stop button. The lights will go out, indicating that both circuits have been interrupted. When I reset the button, they do not self-heal until I push the blue button to reset. That is the purpose of the blue button. The UB LED at the bottom indicates power to the relay. That is all it does.